Oh, my next guest, um, Stephanie Anderson, longtime friend, uh, is the CMO at Time Warner Cable. And we actually worked together at Avaya seven years ago, in marketing together. And she's one of the best, she, then, one of the best B2B marketers I know, and the things she did with distributor networks and just getting them engaged, just amazing stuff. So I've asked her to come out and just share some thoughts around digital, traditional, whatever, and just kind of, you know, what are some of the things they're doing at Time Warner Cable. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stephanie Anderson to the stage. Welcome, how are you? I wanted to sit down, I was so tired, I apologize. <laughs> Aren't we all? Wow. <laughs> so, good morning. This is um, from all of us. Oh, thank you. Green is go, right? Um, so before I get started, just a little, set a little context here. And um, in fact, I was talking to somebody the, last night about the fact that, do you remember being able, going into a department store and trying to return something you bought online? And they said, oh no, well that's a different business. You'll have to like package it up and send it back. I think that's so funny. I think it still happens some places. <laughs> so, uh, you know, people still haven't connected the dots on all of this. Well, we're doing some things that I think maybe are innovative, but they actually are working, so I thought I would share them with you. And um, then I just, before I forget, wanna, Bob, can you stand up for a second? Bob Kasai is my VP of Mass and Digital, and you'll see how we've organized. Um, from LA, he came a long way. Um, but Bob um, is in charge of all Mass and digital, digital for us. When I came on to Time Warner Cable, we were in the last, part of a five-year strategy for one TWC. And we heard about one HP yesterday, uh, which was really fascinating to me, and, and we're doing some efforts uh, similar to what they're doing. But one TWC was really trying to bring together, you know, 31 separate businesses, right? Um, they we went to 12, and then six, and then two, and then really one full business. And I came on about a year before that was completed with the knowledge that I would start out kind of as a corporate marketing person and then slowly but surely, um, you know, get the rest of the, the regions. And, and in fact, uh, we have a business that we purchased called Navisite, which is UK and India uh, based. So uh, I actually am officially global and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Semi-global, I would call it. But anyway, when we were doing that reorganization, one of the things that we did is, is take a very outside in approach. And when I say that, I mean not just think about the customer, because the customer is really, really important, but the competitive landscape as well. And we didn't want to lose the local nature, right, of what we did and what we were good at by bringing things together, but we wanted the benefit of, of, of bringing things together. So um, what I wanted to talk about today is kind of an area that has benefited from this, I think the most probably, because we had a lot of different people making decisions about media, making decisions about TV, making decisions about um, you know, online search, and so on, and we brought that all together under one roof um, so that it could be more flexible. So this is an old chart I'm gonna start with, so these are the kind of the three things I'm gonna cover. Have you seen this chart, the CEB? buying behaviors. So I'm in, I'm in B2B, always have been. Uh, there were like a couple people from Coke. I could never sell a can of Coke in a million years, but I can sell any technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't. <laughs> so, um, but this is the buying behavior, and I don't believe that this would be much different in a uh, consumer world either, right? People are going online, doing their research, talking to their neighbor, whatever, calling, you know, getting together like this, right? And, and they're about 57% through the whole thought process, buying cycle, before they even really engage with, for instance, in our case, a salesperson. So we have small, medium, large business, basically. So small would be, we define that as one to 24 employees. 25 to 499 is our mid-market space, and 499 and forever is our enterprise space. And so you know, the, the approach here is that we have to figure out how to talk to all of those people and nurture them you know, during that sort of buying cycle that starts before a salesperson even walks in the door. So talk about warming the door. I mean, this is beyond, you know, the typical marketing warming the door. So we've had to get more intelligent with that, and I think that we're, we're doing some things that you'll, you'll think are. So most everyone probably is doing some type of kind of real-time attribution management. Is that, yes? Like you know people, one of our mid-market guys presented at an operations review 
and he actually showed pictures of the people. <laughs> and I said, oh, I don't think we should be showing, like, who the actual person is. I mean, I know you figured that out, but <laughs> it just seemed really way too much information. <laughs> I don't know. It was kind of creepy. But anyway, uh, we, you know, we, we do have a lot of good tracking. We understand, you know, who's been where and, and what, um, which, is, which is fabulous, right? But that's really a more, t more about the online piece of it. And what we're doing is trying to marry, um, because we had online and offline dis you know, very disconnected, we're trying to marry that. And you know, a lot of times this is because you can't get a holistic view of what's going on. So in other words, did my television you know, prompt more activity on the web? Did, you know, or, or did it increase calls? Or people went to the web, stopped by the web, and then called? So you know, everything has a label, everything has a number, everything has you know, kind of a finite identifier that allows us to understand that buying process much better. And I will tell you that probably um, now 67, 70% of our calls into our call centers, because we do a lot of inbound selling still, by the way, uh, at the very low end, um, are coming from the web. You know, some, they've originated from the web. So it just justifies what I said earlier about all the research and things that are going on up front. But users do flow between all of these different services, and we do have to just look at it holistically. And, but maybe the biggest thing is um, when they're combined, we're really able to flexibly move and allocate media funds, that's budget, right? It's because budget is king, um, across offline and online medium. So in other words, if we see and identify that there is, you know, th that we're getting a lot of activity in a certain area, we can amp up the other pieces of media that we have in, in that space and then really reap the benefit from that, which is a concept that not everyone understands when you're presenting this to, you know, sort of the C-suite. Sometimes not everybody understands that you should go where the buying is, right? <laughs> they want you to allocate things evenly across the country or outside the country, but the truth of the matter is you need to go where people are buying. So um, we've had some success with this. Uh, the other thing that this allows for uh, really sharing these, these funds is um, just even sharing with our online search agency what we're putting in market. Sounds simple. But I mean, do people do that on a regular basis? Tell your, make sure that your search team or your outside search agency that does your SEM paid search um, actually does know when you're doing a press release or does know when you're, do, do we do that? As a common practice, okay, because it does. Those simple things do work. Those, you know, and combined, they can, you know, really uh, create even more benefit. You know, the other thing is too. I mean, the conversation I have continuously, and Bob knows this very well, uh, is that on and offline, there's not the there's not paid and non-paid, right? It's all paid. We're paying for all of it. So, you know, non-paid would be broadcast television. <laughs> I mean, if you call that non-paid, you know, that's fine. But um, in my world, that costs a lot of money. So I, I think you know, we need to get out of that mentality that online is a separate thing that's happening over in the silo, and we need to combine it. And in fact, uh, Bob and I have had some very uh, uh, aggressive discussions about you know, how we, where we should amp up television and that kind of thing, or print or FSIs or whatever, um, you know, based on that. And some real facts, I mean, we've seen something as simple as you know, back in probably a year ago, starting to combine direct mail and email, 10 to 15% lift in response rates, right? So if you're all doing that, you're getting that, that goodness. We also see this with television. If we amp up television in certain markets, you know, we will definitely you know, see that impact. And so we're trying to look at the total cost in the, of that sale and, and uh, the benefit of it. So again, all of you are probably already using this, these types of things, but really creating a dashboard um, to unite them all. And the reason I invited Bob to be here is I thought, you know, I'm not going to talk about the specifics of that dashboard, but we certainly would be happy to talk to you individually and help, um, help you understand that. So a lot of, you know, strategizing, testing, evaluating, learning, optimizing, repeat, you know, rinse and repeat, as we all do. It's a, you know, moving live object, right? I mean, just, you know, the conversations that we're having and the engagement we're trying to get with our customers and prospects is, you know, is a constant. So we are changing things, you know, by the hour, right? Um, you know, we also do things, we're sensitive to things that are happening in the marketplace that we may not want to be at the top of the search 
list. I'm sure you can think of several things that have happened in the news for us that we don't necessarily want to pay for someone to get to us to find out the answer uh, to that question. So uh, we're very sensitive to all of that um, on a regular basis. So the other thing that we've discovered, and you may have discovered yourself, is that you know online acquisition is more efficient than call centers. And I'm a call center girl from way back. Um, and so I, I really understand all the nuances and costs of that. But good call centers really provide an added opportunity to upsell. We actually had a joke about when we were redoing our website, and I said, well, maybe we should make it kind of tough to buy something from us so people will have to call us you know, and, and, and engage with us. And I joke about that, but to be honest with you, our um, at what we call ARPU average uh, revenue per unit is very high in call centers because they have an opportunity to call in about the promotion and they have an opportunity to, to upsell or cross-sell. So it's very important to understand, again, that total picture of the life cycle of the customer from or prospect from the time that you engage with them initially all the way through that path and how you're going to capture them. So the moral of the story here is really combining all customer engagement efforts helps deliver a holistic view. And I think that we have not um, maybe you know, in practice, we're not, not everyone is doing that on a consistent basis because there is some manual effort to that, by the way. Uh, this is not all automated necessarily. Our agency, which I will tell you is uh, AI Media, uh, who does all of our search, um, they actually also do all the search for the residential side of our company, which gives us you know, an added bonus um, of knowing you know, kind of what's going on there and making sure that we're not invading each other's space or uh, paying for things that we don't need to pay for already, and we, you know, we share some real estate and so on and so forth. So my, my pitch today, I guess, was really just to say, you know, just it, it really does work. We're seeing the benefit of it. We're seeing a lot of um, uh, economies of scale. We're getting higher um, revenue per unit, and uh, it's working. So the coming together, you know, the establishing sort of the, that consistency, the measuring everything, which, who was the blah, blah, blah? Didn't like that <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Maverick. Oh, Maverick, man. <laughs> Ernie's in the house. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Well, we do a lot of blah, blah, blah. But the good news is... <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is, at the end of the day, it actually does prove out, and um, you know that's a, that's a good feeling that you can you know kind of uh, l not legitimize, but certainly um, justify to some extent what you know the decisions that you're making, and that feels good. Um, so with that, really, there's the new digital strategy is just a combined approach, and I what I wanted to kind of plead for is for everybody, if you're doing it great, if you're not, think about integrating those two um, efforts, online and offline, and all engagements with your customer for real. You know, don't be the store that you can't return something because you purchased it online. I mean, I think if we just keep that in the front of our minds um, and not make online seem like such a unique animal, because it's not. It's everything that we do offline just in a different place. So that's my talk. Thank you very much, Jeff, very much. Come join me. Come join me over here. Interesting. So, uh, qu question, what's, with all your years of experience, what's one of your, like, go-to, whether it's a media program, something that you know, if you have to move the dial on whatever dial you have to move, what's something you'd say, man, this worked? Um, so you mean in terms of tactics? Yeah. Yeah, search, you know, for sure. I mean, I remember sitting, not in this current job I'm in, but um, sitting in a meeting that we used to have a, a weekly session uh, at Cablevision. All executives got together every week to review results and whatever. And the EVP of sales would look across the table and say, we're not going to make it on the street. What are you going to do for me? And I'd say, well, give me some money, <laughs> and we'll, you know, we'll bring it in online. So um, definitely that's, a, that's an easy go-to. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be careful about it. It can it can be a double-edged sword, but I would say that's the the go-to. Okay. Something else I've known from our friendship over the years and seeing you in action, just great at motivating people. I'm changing gears now a little bit, but motivating people and stuff. Just I mean, just your philosophies on how do you get your organization just to rock? Well, um, I would say a couple things. One is, um, you know, as I've said, keep that outside 
in sort of thought, thought in the forefront of everyone's mind why you're doing this. You know, you're doing this so that you can have relationships with companies, or we are, um, and you know, we need to earn that every day. So keep that in the forefront of your mind. But basic things like communicating and recommunicating and recommunicating <laughs> work. Uh, we just had a kickoff for all of business services, um, which is like 5,200 people of the 50,000 at, at Time Warner Cable. And we had the, had the top directors and above all together. We actually had a company come in and we wrote a song. We wrote our theme song during the session. So similar to how you have people coming out and you know, doing little things, uh, we had a band and the band would come out and help us write this song. And it was all about our strategy, what we wanted to accomplish. And we had a goal, it was a public goal, to be at $5 billion in f within the next five years. We're at two and a half now. And um, we, we had this whole five and five live event, s very similar to this in some regards. Um, but you could, you basically were committing, and at the end we had everyone commit, like put a peg in the five and five picture and commit to the strategy. Commit, and you had to say out loud what you were going to do and then what you were going to do above the and beyond that. And then we put all that stuff online so that the employees that were the people below the directors could go to these mini five and five live events, commit and uh, read all, you know, see the video, read all this uh, information and um, just extend it down. I mean, we have little tchotchkes. I didn't bring it up here, but my phone has a my f has the strategy on the back of my phone cover. I mean, it's very important to galvanize people through communication. Mm -hmm. So, and it works. It works really well. Good. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much. Thank Love you. it, ladies. Stephanie Anderson, everybody. Thank you.